Greetings, Boogie Hands! Michael here, and the longer Pokemon is around, the farther away we get from the initial introduction of the earlier Pokemon. If those Pokemon are ones that are not iconic like starters, or appear in a lot of games like Zubat, they run the risk of fading into obscurity, aside from the times that you physically encounter them. Game Freak doesn't want us to totally forget these Pokemon though, so they've come up with a variety of ways to give previous generation Pokemon some more attention in a newer generation. Those ways are new members of their evolutionary line, type changes, mega evolutions, Gigantamax forms, and regional variants. Pokemon in the original 151 received special attention more than Pokemon in any other group, simply by nature of being the oldest group of Pokemon, and therefore have had the most opportunities for special attention. However, there are still quite a few Pokemon in Gen 1 that have never received any in-game changes. In this video, I'm gonna be covering every Pokemon in the original 151 that's never gotten any special attention and whether I think they deserve it. And if they do, what I'd like to see. Also, I know a lot of you are thinking, why give special attention to any Kanto Pokemon? They get enough special attention simply by being the original Pokemon. To which I would respond, when was the last time you thought about a Dugong? Clearly, there are Kanto Pokemon that are forgotten despite being in Kanto. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's start the list progressing in Pokedex order. We begin by skipping over the starters, obviously, Butterfree due to its Gigantamax form, Beedrill and Pidgeot due to their Megas, and Raticate due to its Alola form. That gets us to the first Pokemon, Fearo. Fearo is basically the second tier regional bird of the Kanto region. The Pidgeot line has always garnered more attention, being the one Ash used in the anime, the Kanto rivals used in the games, and getting a Mega. Meanwhile, Firo is characterized as the meaner, less majestic early game bird, which I get, look at its face. But I actually think Firo is better than Pidgeot in a lot of situations, particularly in the earlier games due to getting flying moves sooner, being faster, and hitting harder. And let's not forget Kenya in the Johto region, one of the best Pokemon to use on a Johto playthrough team that I have used multiple times. Firo is no longer better than Pidgeot though, since both have easy access to flying moves and Pidgeot got a stat buff even without its Mega. Firo's base stat total of 442 is pretty underwhelming in today's meta as well. I think Firo deserves something nice, and I think a regional evolution works best due to its lower base stat total. A regional variant or gigantic Antimax form would not make it stronger, and I think it needs to be stronger. Regular permanent evolutions don't happen anymore, they're all just regional now, and Game Freak has clearly moved on from mega evolutions. I should probably mention though that Firo's base stat total does not guarantee an evolution, since Marowak, for example, has a lower base stat total and only got a new form, not an evolution, but that was in Gen 7, before they started doing regional evolutions in Gen 8. They are giving Stantler an evolution, and its base stat total is several points higher than Firo's. Firo can evolve. The next Kanto Pokemon in line is Arbok, a Pokemon I'm actually surprised hasn't gotten any sort of attention yet. While it has minimal appearances in the games, it had a big role in the original anime series, being Jesse's main Pokemon. I personally think Arbok could have gotten some kind of special attention all the way back in Gen 2. As I discussed in my Dark Types Then vs. Now video, Dark is the only one of the three later added types that did not have any previous generation Pokemon get it as a type. Steel gained Magnemite and Magneton, while Fairy gained a bunch of previous generation Pokemon. But Dark got nothing. I think Arbok would have been a great fit for the Dark type due to, and I quote, having a very vengeful nature, and using fear tactics is basically its whole thing. However, that ship has sailed, so instead I'd like to see it get a regional evolution like Firo. Its base stat total is around the same as Firo's, in other words, definitely low enough for an evolution, and since its move pool is wide, it could become a really good Pokemon. Plus it's a snake. Snakes are cool. We then skip over Raichu and Sandslash due to their Alola forms, plus the Pikachu line is the last line that needs any more attention, to arrive at Nidoking and Nidoqueen. These are classic, cool, and very strong Pokemon, but they're in an interesting spot due to how closely they are linked. You can't have one without the other because while their stats are different, they're basically two different forms for the same Pokemon. I firmly believe that if they had been introduced in Gen 4 or later, after gender form differences had been introduced, then they would be the same Pokemon. 
just different forms for the male and female. But as it is now, you have to do both of them together. Meaning if you give a new form to one, you have to give it to the other. Nido King and Nido Queen cannot get new evolutions because they're already at the top of three stage evolutionary lines. They could have gotten mega evolutions, but as I mentioned earlier, we've clearly moved on from that. They could get Gigantamax forms, but I think that's highly unlikely. I'm pretty sure we're not gonna see those outside of Galar games. So that leaves regional variants. Honestly though, I don't really think they need those. Because they're so linked and might as well be the same Pokemon, if you give a regional variant for one, you gotta give it to the other. And that means that you'd end up with two regional variants that are basically the same. And I would rather those two regional variants be two completely different Pokemon rather than two basically the same Pokemon. If they did give them new forms though, I would want them to have different typings. Years ago, my concepts for Alolan Nidoqueen and Nidoking were steel and fire type respectively. And I still think that would be the best way to do it. It would make it so they're not so much the same Pokemon. Aha, it is I. Grunty boy. Sounds more like grumpy boy today. What happened? Well, normally I have coffee every morning, but the stuff we have at the hideout right now can barely be considered coffee. It's like hot butt water. And I am upset. I want good coffee. Sounds like you should try out Trade Coffee, the sponsor of this video. Trade Coffee allows you to discover and enjoy coffee from the nation's local roasters shipped right from their roasteries. Ooh, okay, I'm interested, but I do have some particular coffee preferences. I don't wanna just select a bag at random. Well then Trade is actually extra good for you. Step one is taking Trade's quiz, where you answer questions about how you like your coffee. For example, I personally prefer cold brew since I live in Texas and I am always warm. So Trade matched me with some coffees that are compatible with my preparation and taste preferences. Then choose your delivery frequency and they ship the coffee right to your door at peak freshness and in compostable packaging. After you prepare it and enjoy it in whichever method you prefer, you can rate the coffees you got so Trade can continue to send you coffee you love. Well, that does sound lovely. I hate dealing with the grocery store and this is just so personalized. Plus I'd be supporting local businesses, which is something I am all for. I didn't know you were such a proponent of small businesses. My team executed a hostile takeover of a large corporation's building. I could not have made it more obvious that I prefer buying local. The quality is just so much better. Fair enough. So are you in? If you use my link specifically in the description below, you'll get your first bag for free with free shipping included. Plus Trade has a quality match guarantee, meaning that they're so sure that you'll love your first bag of coffee that if you don't, they'll send you another one for free. Oh, I am definitely in. I'll take the quiz ASAP. However, I'm also taking one of your bags, so I end up with two free bags. Are you serious? I just helped you. Come on, man, I'm a bad guy in a bad mood. This cannot surprise you. Ta-ta. Ugh. Anyways, thanks so much to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Be sure to take their quiz using my link in the description below. But now back to the video. Next, we skip over Clefable due to its type change. I know a type change isn't as spicy as a new form, but getting the fairy type was a massive buff for Clefable. So like, I think it's fine. Ninetales because of its Alola form, Wigglytuff because of its type change, Golbat because of Crobat, and Vileplume because of Bellossom. That gets us to Parasect. A Pokemon that Pokemon really doesn't care about. This video by the Super Carlin brothers analyzes what Pokemon's least favorite Pokemon is, and they determined it was Paris and Parasect. And I have to agree with them. Parasect has barely appeared anywhere, both in the games and in the show, and it's overall a pretty terrible Pokemon. Its base stat total is a poor 405, and Bug Grass is terrible typing due to having six weaknesses two of them four times. And fun fact, back in Gen 1, due to Bug being weak to Poison, Paris and Parasect were the only Pokemon to ever have three different four times weaknesses. So they were even worse back then. As a result of these issues, Parasect is one of, if not the most forgettable Pokemon in all of Gen 1. And part of me wants to say, just forget about giving it a new form because it's not that interesting. However, they are giving new evolutions to Stantler and Basculin, so clearly Parasect would also be fine. And honestly, I kinda want to see it because I do genuinely think its design concept is interesting. 
It's not the one I want to see the most, but I'd get a kick out of it. Parasect absolutely needs a full-blown permanent evolution to be made relevant again. And if they want to make it any good, they should probably change its typing away from bug grass. Maybe since the bug is literally mostly dead, they can make it a ghost type once the mushroom 100% takes over. Next up is Venomoth, another underwhelming Gen 1 bug, but not in as bad of a situation as Parasect in regards to appearances. Koga, Janine, and even Sabrina use it at different points, and its base stat total is quite a bit better than most other bugs in Gen 1 only being beaten by Scyther and Pinsir. It also garnered attention as part of Twitch Plays Pokemon, but that was due to the Pokemon fandom, not the creators. It has been ignored outside of Kanto and Johto though, so I think it's a good candidate for a regional evolution since its base stat total is not too high. Poison is more viable now than it was before Gen 6 thanks to its advantage over Fairy. So with a stat buff up to around the 500 range, it could be an effective Pokemon to counter that type. Plus it would be nice to see the OG Moth Pokemon be actually decent. After Venomoth, we skip over Dugtrio due to its Alola form and Persian due to its Alola form, Perserker, and Gigantamax Meowth. Man, how did Meowth end up with so many goodies? But then we get to the next Pokemon, Golduck, a Pokemon that I'm actually quite surprised is here. Psyduck is quite a popular Gen 1 Pokemon and Golduck has been present in every region's Pokedex in at least one game. Yet somehow Golduck has never gotten a new evolution or a new form or anything and I think it's a top priority Pokemon for getting one of those. Psyduck is a beloved Pokemon. It deserves a spicy new evolution. Since Golduck already has a very solid base stat total of 500, I think a simple variant would work perfectly. An easy change is making it the water psychic type we've always thought it should have been. Another fun option is a totally new Pokemon for Psyduck to evolve into instead. Maybe a design that has a more feathered design rather than the leathery smooth skin that they normally have. Next, we get to Primeape, hands down the least memorable fighting type in Kanto. At least it's forgettable for Ash. He caught one, left it somewhere to train, and then the anime promptly forgot that he ever had it. Also, it was left out of the fighting specialist Bruno's team, along with Polyrath, in favor of two Onyxes? Bruno? Why? For the record, I also think Polyrath is kind of overlooked due to Politoed being better than it, at least in the competitive scene due to Drizzle. However, it's still a part of a pretty popular line. So I think it's all right. I think Primeape should get something since it's the only fighting type in Kanto to not have gotten anything. I feel like a mega evolution would have worked well, but that ship has sailed. A regional evolution would work though, since its base stat total is only 455. If they went with a regional variant though, I think an amusing one would be a primate that is actually quite calm rather than so angry it can die. It has been known to become so angry that it dies as a result. Its face looks peaceful in death, however, What? After that, we skip over Arcanine because of Growlithe's Hisuian form, which means that Arcanine is either gonna get a Hisuian form or Growlithe's gonna evolve into something else, but both count. Polyrath because of Politoed, Alakazam because of its Mega, and Machamp because of its Gigantamax form. That brings us to Victory Bell. Victory Bell is often seen as the counterpart to Vileplume, both of them being opposite version exclusives in the Kanto region. The Vileplume line got the new evolution Bell Awesome though, but Victory Bell did not. Apparently they did plan a split evolution Pokemon, but it didn't make the final cut. Victory Bell cannot evolve, but I would like to see it get a regional variant or an alternate evolution for Weepin Bell, which I should probably mention are basically the same thing. It would likely have to remain grass type since it's literally just a sentient plant, kind of hard to change that. So we'd swap out the poison type for something else. I love Pokemon's idea for a spicy pepper Victory Bell that's grass fire type. I think in general, I just really want to see a grass grass fire type, and I think a Victory Bell variant is a cool way to do that. Next up is a Pokemon I'm actually shocked has not had anything new, Tentacruel. It's been in the large majority of regional dexes, basically being the Ocean Zubat. But unlike Golbat, Tentacruel did not get an evolution. But the reason for that is simple. Tentacruel is already quite strong having a base stat total of 515. I think a regional form would work better for Tentacruel than an evolution due to Tentacruel's existing strength. It seems like a lot of fan artists wanna see an electric type one. I don't fully understand how they all came to such a consistent decision, but I'm on board. Regardless of the type though, I think Tentacruel and Tentacruel deserve a change. 
if not for the sole purpose of giving us something else in the water. After Tenacruel, we skip over Golem because of its Alola form, Rapidash because of its Galarian form, Slowbro because of both Slowking and its Galarian form, Magneton because of Magnezone and its type change, and Farfetch'd because of its Galarian form and Surfetch'd. That brings us to Dodrio. Dodrio is a Pokemon that got more attention early on, appearing in three of the first four regional dexes, but lately has fallen to the wayside, only appearing in one of the last four. I think it deserves some kind of nod though. An evolution would benefit it since it's based at total is 470, not as low as some others, but still not too high to disqualify it from evolving. However, I don't think evolving is a good fit design wise for Dodrio because what do you do aside from just add another head? There are lots of opportunities for a non-evolving regional form though. Multiple artists have designed flamingo-based dodrios, which I think is a great fit due to its long neck. If these were fairy flying type, that would really improve dodrios viability since fairy is such a good type. Next we have dugong. One of the most forgettable water types from Gen 1, primarily due to looking pretty bland and not being anything special in the battle department. It could get an evolution, but its base stat total is pushing the upper limits of Pokemon that have gotten evolutions in recent generations. Gen 4 evolved a lot of Pokemon that were already quite strong, like Magmar and Rhydon, but they've pulled back on evolving Pokemon that strong in the recent generations. To be brutally honest though, I don't think Dugong deserves anything new. I know that may come as a surprise because it's not a Pokemon that's already gotten some new things. It's gotten nothing. It's extremely overlooked and forgotten. But I think there's a reason for that. Its design is just so bland. It looks almost just like a real animal. And like, what do you do with it? If any of you can make an interesting dugong evolution or regional variant, I'd love to see it. Submit it to my subreddit and maybe it'll show up on meme review. But like, for now, I don't really know what you could do with Dugong to make it anything interesting. So I think it's one of those Pokemon that Game Freak just made, didn't do a great job on, and should just be left on the wayside. After Dugong, we skip over Muck due to its Alola form, then we get to Cloyster. Cloyster has always been one of the lesser known Kanto water types due to it not being easy to obtain. But I see why that's the case. It is darn strong, having a base stat total of 525. I think Cloyster would be a great Pokemon to be given a variant, not an evolution since it's so strong already, due to it being based on bivalves. Bivalve's shapes vary so much that there are a lot of ways to alter Cloyster's design while still being faithful to its original premise. We then skip over Gengar because of its Mega Evolution and Gigantamax form, and Onyx because of Steelix and Mega Steelix. Then we reach Hypno, a Pokemon like Arbok I thought could have been given the dark type. The thing kidnaps children. Like, come on. I don't really think it needs an evolution, and while its inherent creepiness puts it lower on my list of Pokemon I'd want to have a regional variant, I feel like there are some solid concepts that would be pretty cool. I could see a Psychic Dark variant working well as a way to give it the typing it could have gotten in the past but didn't. I'm also a big fan of this Sandman-inspired variant, a more wholesome take on the putting people to sleep aspect of its design. We then skip over Kingler due to its Gigantamax form and arrive at Electrode. This Pokemon should absolutely not get any new forms. Electrode is one of those Pokemon that would have been ridiculed for its design concept, like Garbodor and Vanillux, had it been introduced later in the series. I don't think it deserves to have any new forms, both because its design concept is silly to begin with, but also because there's not anywhere for its design to really go. The only ways to power it up via Evolution, Omega, or Gigantamax are to make it look like a better Pokeball, like a great Ultra or Master Ball, a design concept I think makes its original design concept even goofier and illogical, or to have it surround itself with more Pokeballs, which I also think is silly. Any regional variant would also be minimally interesting, just changing what type of ball it is. Next, we skip over Exeggutor and Marowak because of their Alola forms, the Hitmons due to Tyrogue and Hitmon top, Lickitung due to Licky Licky, Weezing due to its Galarian form, Rhydon due to Rhyperior, Chansey because of Blissey and Happini, Tangela due to Tangrowth, Kangaskhan because of its Mega, and Seedra due to Kingdra. That gets us to Sea King. 
Seeking is a pretty unimpressive Pokemon and one of the most forgettable Gen 1 water types. Its design is basically just a fish with a horn and its stats are underwhelming. Personally, I'm not that surprised it hasn't gotten any special attention since it's a pretty unpopular Pokemon. However, despite that, I think it's a pretty solid candidate for a new form, specifically a regional evolution because of its underwhelming stats. That's because there's a lot of really interesting fish that a new Seeking form could take inspiration from. A poison water type lionfish, a fighting water beta fish, a ground water handfish, or something else. I know we don't really need more fish Pokemon, so a great way to represent one of the countless really interesting fish in the sea is to take a currently uninteresting fish and make it interesting. Next, we move on to Starmie, another Pokemon I'm kind of surprised hasn't gotten more attention. Due to its prominent role as a member of Misty's team and appearance in most of the regional dexes, I suppose I just expected it to have gotten more attention. I definitely think it deserves some. It doesn't need an evolution due to its already high stats, so it would get a regional form. A lot of artists seem to agree with me that a cool way to do that would be to make it not a water type anymore and focus more on its potentially extraterrestrial origin. Next, we skip over Mr. Mime due to Mime Jr., its Galarian form, and Mr. Rhyme, Scyther due to Scizor, Jinx due to Smoochum, Electabuzz due to Elekid and Electivire, Magmar due to Magby and Magmortar, and Pinsir due to its Mega. That gets us to Tauros, a Pokemon I'm disappointed has not gotten any attention. Not only is it a Pokemon that I'm quite fond of, but it's a Pokemon that started out very powerful in the games, but has since become outclassed. I think it needs something to give it a new jolt of life. Even if I didn't personally like Tauros that much, which I do, I think it's a great candidate for some new forms because there's some really interesting ways to give it some. If it had gotten a Mega, one based on a Minotaur would have been incredible. They could still do a Minotaur design today though, simply by making it a permanent regional evolution instead, maybe called Minotauros. Tauros does have a pretty high base stat total, but if Electabuzz and Magmar can evolve, so can Tauros. An alternate form would work well too though, maybe based it on another kind of bovine like a water buffalo or a yak. Next we skip over Gyarados because of its Mega and Lapras because of its Gigantamax form, bringing us to Ditto. I'll make this quick, Ditto should not get a new form. It wouldn't make any sense. This Pokemon's whole thing is immediately transforming into something else. Like it arguably has more forms than any other Pokemon. Making Ditto look different wouldn't really be cool because it would immediately change into a different Pokemon. Ditto absolutely is good as is. Next, we skip over the evolutions because obviously, and Porygon because of its two evolutions. That brings us to Amistar and Kabutops. I don't think these Pokemon should get new forms for two reasons. The first reason is the same as Nidoking and Nidoqueen. If you give something to one, you kind of have to give it to the other because they're a pair of Pokemon. While their designs are more different than Nidoking and Nidoqueen, they still have a lot of similarities both being aquatic, both having the same typing, and both being prehistoric. And that's actually the second reason. They're prehistoric. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Pokemon that have been extinct for millions of years to get a regional variant. They would have had to have a long time to change their biology in a certain place, but they haven't had that time. I suppose they could have maybe formed a regional variant millions of years ago. So if you revive a dome or a helix fossil taken from that different place, that would give you different Amistars and Kabutops. But at that point, I'd rather just have completely new fossil Pokemon. Besides, Lord Helix is perfect as is. Then we skip over Aerodactyl due to its Mega, which I should mention, I don't think really makes sense and I'm not sure why they did it. How can a form that is brought about by a strong bond with a trainer exist for a Pokemon that has been dead for millions of years and never coexisted with trainers until we started reviving fossils 20 years ago? Like wh where, where did the Mega Aerodactyl come from? Anyways, we then skip over Snorlax due to its Gigantamax form and the legendary birds due to their Galarian forms. That gets us to Dragonite. I am actually quite stunned that this iconic Pokemon has gotten zero special attention since its introduction. It's Dragonite for crying out loud. 
the first ever fully evolved dragon, and the iconic Pokemon of Lance, yet it's gotten nothing. It didn't get a Mega, unlike every other pseudo legend from the first four generations. Although I suppose they might've avoided that due to avoid making an item called a Dragoniteite. They could have given it a Gigantamax form, but they didn't. However, going forward, they could do a regional variant since it obviously cannot evolve, but that would make it the first pseudo legendary to get a regional form. It would be new, but I would love to see it. Gen 9 could introduce a regional Dragonite and a new pseudo species, making it the first gen to introduce two pseudos since Gen 3. Finally, we skip over Mewtwo due to its Megas and get to the last Pokemon, Mew. As you might imagine, Mew should not get anything. It's a mythical Pokemon that is not natively available in games, so it wouldn't make sense for a new form for it to be a selling point of the game, because it's not in the game. And that wraps up the list. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link and take the quiz in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. With an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, it ends. Gotta catch them all.